This is a very important issue because uh, a, a physician can prescribe or can treat a patient, but uh, if the patient, of course, is not uh, willing to, uh, to take the pill or to take the medication or the drug, uh, it becomes a, a serious problem. So uh, the compliance of the patient is very important, but I would prefer to, to use the term adherence instead of compliance because this uh, is a more, uh, it implies a more uh, active collaboration of the patient in uh, his or her medication. So the technology can help for sure the adherence of a patient because uh, uh, through uh, smartphones, applications, uh, notifications, devices, uh, uh, monitoring devices, uh, portals uh, and so on, uh, the patient uh, feels uh, like part of a community, maybe with other patients, or also can establish a, a continuous a direct contact uh, with the physician. Uh, wearable technology are becoming increasingly important in respiratory medicine. There are several ways uh, in which uh, they can be used in respiratory medicine. For example, uh, monitoring uh, patient status continuously during daily and night activities. Uh, for example, a simple example is a continuous monitor of uh, saturation, oxygen saturation, or a continuous monitor of patient uh, ventilation or ventilatory parameter like respiratory frequency, tidal volume, inspiratory, expiratory time, and so on. But also, it can be, they can be used for uh, monitoring uh, uh, activity the acti through activity trackers, uh, posture, uh, and uh, through accelerometers uh, or uh, inertial sensor or uh, air quality. So with portable devices, we can uh, have an idea of the quality of the air indoor and outdoor. So the integration of all this information is the next uh, challenge for respiratory medicine to better treat the patient. Ergo device is one of the different devices that can be or are proposed uh, nowadays uh, in this field. Uh, Ergo is based on a, a simple respiratory band uh, made of uh, resistive uh, uh, wires that can track uh, uh, respiratory motion and assess uh, respiratory frequency. Uh, but uh, like Ergo, there are uh, several other devices that can be worn by the patient, like shirt, shirts uh, or uh, inertial sensors uh, or uh, different kind of bands uh, placed on different uh, level of the thorax. Uh, the key point uh, is to validate these devices. Actually, not devices, but these, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, wearables. Uh, the key point is to validate in the sense that uh, it is easy to say we have a new wearable device but it's not so easy to make the important step to make this wearable device a medical device. So the next step and next challenge for a plethora of this kind of devices is to become medical devices so assess their repeatability, their accuracy, their safety through validation studies. As I was telling you, the uh, importance now, important thing now is to validate, so to make this important step into validation. Uh, another challenge is to make these devices more and more wearable, in the sense that they, uh, the next challenge will be uh, to have them directly in contact with the skin. Miniaturized uh, sensors can uh, be used in the already, but uh, will be uh, very soon proposed uh, to be used over the skin or even uh, transcutaneously to have a minimal uh, interference with the normal uh, daily activities of the patient. Together with the development of new sensors, uh, as I was telling before, uh, the next uh, big challenge is going to be the integration of the data coming from these different sensors with uh, um, artificial intelligence and the different uh, 
uh, algorithms uh, based on machine learning, deep learning, uh, that will be able uh, to integrate the data coming from different sensors, from different patients, uh, from large population of patients uh, into uh, big data analysis uh, that can be helpful uh, not only for the single patient but also for the uh, let's say for respiratory medicine in general to better know uh, different diseases uh, uh.